Hello everybody, I'm Howie Hawkins. I'm here in Tbilisi, Georgia, and I'm going to interview Ia Iradze, who hopefully I pronounced her name right. She's a political economist here in Georgia. And I first became aware of her when she did an interview that appeared in Posley, which is a Russian socialist publication, and Tempest, an American socialist publication, talking about the movement uh, here in Georgia against authoritarianism, against the foreign agents, registration law. And we are speaking a couple days after an election, which people have a lot of questions about. So, so this is Ia Iratze, and I'm going to introduce her again briefly. She's a political economist here in Tbilisi, Georgia, who I became aware of after an interview she did with some other uh, left-wing people in Georgia about the movement against the foreign agents law and authoritarianism in Georgia. And now we're also speaking after this election about which there are a lot of questions. So Ia, uh, tell us about the movement in the spring. Why don't we start there? And yes. you know, what people on the left in the West should know about your struggle? Mm -hmm. Yes, so the, in, in spring this year, 2024, the government of Georgia, um, they initiated um, the law on, of transparency of foreign agents, uh, which was actually quickly called a uh, Russian law in Georgia. Um, and it was called a Russian law because um, this, um, a lot of um, critical um, actors, civil societal actors, and also broader public in Georgia, they were sure that this was very uh, similar to the law that was earlier implemented in Russia. Um, so what was the law about? The Georgian government claimed that their aim was to increase the transparency of funding of the non-governmental organizations in Georgia um, and all the organizations that receive more than 20% of funding from abroad, they have to register themselves in the special register as agents. And um, But the critical um, uh, voice on the other side, they opposed um, this framing of the law by the government because a lot of people, including myself, we saw this law as a very dangerous tool for establishing uh, more state control and also consolidating authoritarianism in Georgia because this is also exactly what this law was used for in Russia. Um, so since we saw this danger that the government would then not only make most of the organizations, not only NGOs but also media organizations, trade unions, um, um, including maybe also social movements, everyone receiving funding from outside to register themselves as agents, to label them as, as foreign agents. This is one danger. And another thing is that if um, organizations resist or deny to do so, they have to pay fines. And the fines are very high, so those organizations who cannot make it and who cannot pay it, they will uh, automatically disappear and vanish. Um, and considering that actually the civil society in Georgia is, is quite dynamic, it's it's um, very active um, and everyone um, saw basically the danger that the government wanted to um, get rid of the critical voices, including um, yeah, people coming from NGOs or trade unions or academia and so on. So the movement in the spring and the protests which went on for several weeks and it was uh, basically in some weeks every day, every evening there would be a protest uh, was calling the government to abolish um, this law but um, yeah, that, that didn't help. Unfortunately, the law was passed um, um, uh, this spring um, but still, um, most of the people who were uh, protesting this spring, and I'm also speaking of myself, we are still very sure that the main aim of this law is it's anti-democratic, it's about strengthening um, the power of, of the government. And we also have to consider the um, foreign policy or the geopolitical aspect of the law. So this was happening in parallel with um, the government starting this very anti-Western rhetoric, so anti-European, anti-US rhetoric, which has not happened in Georgia so far. It's happening for the first time. Um, so many of us saw the danger of, on the one hand, this consolidation of autocracy within Georgia, 
and on the other hand Georgia turning more towards to Russia and becoming very critical and even aggressive against the USA, Europe and so on. So these were two parallel things going on um, in the last few months. I mean it's still going on because uh, we, um, yeah, we just had elections and um, even though the official results say that the government party won uh, now I mean today there is the first protest announced again this evening um, that um, a lot of people have the feeling that this is not the right that the, that the elections were um, falsified um, so this conflict still goes on so the, the, the government trying to yeah, basically make the shift both in the inner politics, um, become more autocratic and more authoritarian and on the other hand turn more towards Russia. Um, this is all very dangerous and also from my personal perspective I see, um, I see a lot of danger for Georgia in that. And I think what's important maybe to know for the left um, outside Georgia because there has been also a lot of critique against or questions at least against this movement in spring uh, why why these people are protesting I mean about this law and so on but um, it's important to it's important to see that all of this resistance that started well it didn't start in spring but which was really articulated so well in spring it was not necessarily about um, how much closer Georgia should get to the USA or to Europe, but it was more about the fear that the Georgian government is turning towards Russia. And that's the fear that we see, um, because this is not only about foreign politics, we know that it's also about our own democracy within Georgia. And um, that's also something I'm most concerned about, that what if we have, we don't have soon spaces for critique and um, resistance so that's so the, when, when you went out in the streets in the spring yes and when you go out tonight uh there are people including on the left especially on the left in the united states who will say you're just proxies of the cia for a quote-unquote color mm -hmm. revolution uh against russia mm -hmm. so are you a proxy is the cia no. telling you what to do <laughs> No, that would be that would be misinterpretation, and it would also be oversimplifying things because things are not that simple. Um, no, I mean most of the people, and I'm talking about uh, people who I know, my friends, my colleagues, and every uh, basically everyone around me, and people who I have worked with or organizations I have worked with over the last few years were involved in these processes. Um, they are they are going out to the street because they see this danger that I just mentioned. So first of all, losing that level of democracy that we have right now in Georgia, and this is really dangerous. And secondly, um, that Georgia also loses all the legitimacy from outside because I mean Georgia is a small country and it has always gone through some pressures from from the west so to say which of course i mean we can assess it very critically and i have uh, myself um, written also on this in a very critical manner but right now when we are facing the situation whether uh, it's not about balanced politics i mean unfortunately our government is not trying to carry through balanced politics and maneuver between russia and the west but it's clearly leaning more towards russia and attacking the West and that's dangerous. I mean, that, that's what it is about and um, not that people here in Georgia are somehow protecting the US or EU interests. That's, that, that would be misinterpretation. So Georgia is a small country and I know uh, people here are concerned that the international system uh, is leaving them at the mercy of outside big powers. Russia certainly, but also the EU and the West Talk about the economy of Georgia. Uh, you and your colleagues have talked about it being a transit hub for capitalism. Yes. Uh, you know, between the EU and China in particular, but also Turkey, the US, yes. Russia, you know, having investments here and interests. And so how does that play out in the, in the politics we're talking about? 
Yes, I mean, that's, um, uh, we are actually in a very vulnerable situation and this is vulnerable not only in terms of this political constellations, but uh, of course, economics and geopolitics come in. And uh, first of all, as you say, Georgia is a very small country, which means it has actually very little political power on the global scale. And secondly, Georgia's economy is uh, what I also use this term. It's a peripheral economy. It's a very dependent economy, dependent on the foreign capital. It's dependent on uh, foreign currency. It's dependent on, we have a huge trade deficit, so foreign goods and so on. So it's a very vulnerable economy, right? I mean, the, uh, the inflow of foreign capital, um, foreign currency, um, remittances, all that plays a very important role that the economy remains more or less stable and then um, comes the geopolitical additional layer to it because um, because of Georgia's geographical location um, situated somehow between Asia and Europe uh, there are there, there is an European interest that comes in and Chinese interest and of course Turkey is when it especially when it comes to bigger infrastructure projects like for example the most the re most recent and disputed project is this Anaklia deep sea port and who is going to build this port whether it's the Chinese investment or European or US here you see then the clash of these geopolitical interests so um, especially coming out of this very vulnerable I would say an unstable economic situation I think it's even more important for the Georgian government it doesn't matter whether it's the current government or governments in future that they they should really carry very careful policy very uh, more trying maybe to balance out all these interests and not take the clear sides because if uh, the situation here it gets unstable uh, politically even right um, then there is a huge danger that the foreign capital leaves the country um, or there is a crisis in the banking system in the financial system and um, that can have very dangerous implications for the overall economy so um, it's very fragile um, and I see um, yeah, I see a lot of economic risks and um, not, not mentioning the sanctions. I mean, if there are even sanctions against Georgia and so on, I mean, that, that will be even disastrous for, for the country and for the overall economy. So uh, this is why, I mean, to, to sum up this very fragile uh, situation that Georgia is in economically, I think, uh, unfortunately also, it does not... Um, allow the country to really pursue its what one may be call very independent politics right it's uh, there are lots of conditionalities and conditions that have to be taken into consideration yeah it would seem if, if there's going to be a progressive left in, in georgia <laughs> that's successful it's going to have to be linked to similar movements in other countries yes that and, would be important for sure and, the thing you hear about the movement in the spring, which was so massive, I mean, yes. what, like 10, 15% of the population on the street at any one time, um, it was spontaneous. It wasn't yes. led by a left party or trade unions. No. It was young people. Yes. So there seems to be popular sentiment, but Georgia has yet to consolidate a left or a green left party. Yeah. Um, you want to say a few words about the difficulties there yes i mean that would be for sure that would be very important that we do have at some point left leftist party and green party which we don't right now unfortunately um and um Yes, that would be really important because I think there is a truly also uh, really a gap if you look at the political party landscape of Georgia, there is a gap there. You don't really have parties that represent 
uh, leftist ideas or green ideas. Um, and on the other hand, there is also a gap if one looks at the voting patterns of the population. Usually, you have a huge chunk of the population who are not really happy with the existing um, constellation, the way the parties are. But then when they go to elections, they have to choose some party. They have to vote for someone. And this was also the case now at these elections that many voted for the opposition parties, not because including myself, they are very keen of this or that particular opposition party, but only because they didn't want to vote for the government. So if there are left and green parties, that would definitely broaden also the choice for the Georgians who they can vote for. And uh, um, I really hope, I really hope that we do have, we do have these kind of parties in the, in the nearest future. And then of course the international linkages and all these connections will be very, very important too. Well, I think those of us in the American left can relate to what you just said. Mm. We have similar problems in building a real alternative and people are not satisfied with what they're getting mm. from the major parties. So. Yeah. Uh, why don't we uh, wrap up there with that commonality and thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.